Hello, and thanks to you all for attending my talk today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Crystal Meyer, and since 2019, I've been the Curatorial Associate of Entomology at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA. I'm also the president-elect of the Coleoptera Society, so you'll be seeing a lot more of me in the coming years. Hopefully, this will be a nice introduction for all of us. If you're a coleopterist, you're probably already familiar with the big names in North American coleoptera taxonomy. Lacant, Horn, Say, Ball. These scientists laid the foundation for what the US, what US coleopterology is today, and their collections are housed in the Museum of Comparative Zoology. The MCZ is located just outside of Boston in the New England region of the United States. New England is famous for its seasons, as is demonstrated by the lovely plum blossoms in spring, just outside of our building on the Harvard University campus. The MCZ is just one of several museums at Harvard and was established by Louis Agassiz in 1859. The Harvard Museum of Natural History, our public museum, displays a small fraction of the specimens from the MCZ, and our entomology collection is located within the Harvard Museum of Natural History building. Perhaps by virtue of only barely dipping my toe into the North American beetle fauna for my graduate work, I was actually spared working with Lacant, Horns, and Say's materials in the revered grad school pilgrimage to the MCZ for the examination of types. So this meant, as the new curatorial associate, I was actually largely unfamiliar with the history of this collection. So I set out to familiarize myself with it, particularly with some of the oldest material, these coleopterological relics, and I'd like to share some of this history with you. So first, a few stats. Well, certainly not the largest entomological collection with only about 8 million total specimens and about 5 million beetles. It is certainly the most tight dense collection of beetles in the US, perhaps even the world. The MCZ is home to about 33,000 primary types, around 50% of which are beetles. These specimens are widely used by the community for taxonomic studies, but their value goes well beyond that of descriptive work. Many of these specimens date back to the late 18th and early 19th centuries, and the sheer age of these specimens provides us with a window back in time to North America at the outset of European colonization, allowing us to make inferences about the distribution of species and the functioning of ecosystems prior to heavy habitat modification by the Europeans. Given this amazing density of historical and taxonomically important material, it's worth examining the early history of entomology in the US and looking for links to the MCZ. There's actually some really great literature on the history of the study of entomology in the United States, including detailed accounts of entomology in the 1800s by Edgerton and a 1910 publication in Popular Science Monthly by J.B. Smith. A quick look at the who's who of early entomologists in the United States reveals the collections of many of the first coleopterists and indeed the first entomologists um, in the United States are actually housed at Harvard. Only one of these entomologists, Thaddeus Harris, was actually affiliated with Harvard. So the question still stands, how on earth did all of these collections wind up here? So, it's clear that the presence of these early collections in the MCZ is not necessarily a direct result of collection by MCZ staff. And in fact, much of these collections date back from before the establishment of the Museum of Comparative Zoology in 1859. So where did these collections come from and how did they wind up here, uh, forming the nucleus of what is probably the most historically important collection in the United States? Well. Digging through the literature revealed a small community scattered throughout the northeastern United States, but mainly centered in Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. At the center of all of this again was the same name, Thaddeus Harris, and his mentor, William Dandridge Peck. William Dandridge Peck, with his snazzy hairdo and mutton chops, was the first U.S. born entomologist. He led quite a varied life, trained as a physician, then moved to a farm in Maine. He remained there and became quite a naturalist. Perhaps somewhat fortuitously, um, his interest in natural history actually came from his discovering a, cop a copy of Systema Naturae in the remnants of a shipwreck. He continued his work in entomology, particularly in economically important insects. 
But then he was appointed the first professor at, Har at of natural history at Harvard University. His specimens remain in the collection at the MCZ, though they're scattered throughout the collection. One of his first students, Thaddeus Harris, um, was actually one of the first entomologists in the US. He was not a professional entomologist, but was trained as a medical doctor and found his place as librarian and lecturer at Harvard University. His work in economic entomology is well known, and he sent many of his specimens to another entomologist, who I'll discuss later, Thomas Say. The Harris collection, oddly, did not remain at Harvard after his death. It was actually donated to the Boston Society of Natural History, though it was transferred back to Harvard and to the MCC in the first half of the 20th century. This collection remains the oldest intact insect collection in the United States and contains all of Harris's types, as well as specimens from the infamous Say collection. So the Say collection. In its current iteration, it's merely a shadow of its supposed former splendor, it, but it contains what remains of the putative type specimens of many of Thomas Say's species, as well as what remains of those specimens in Harris's collection that were examined by Say. Thomas Say was considered to be the father of descriptive taxonomy in the United States. He described over a thousand new species of beetles and helped found the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. He was also a professor at University of Pennsylvania. As I mentioned earlier, he examined much of Harris's material and included that in his collection. Unfortunately, what remains of this historically important collection is nearly destroyed. Upon his death, the collection was shipped to Harris by way of New Orleans. When they arrived at Harvard, they found it to be in terrible condition, pest ridden and in pieces. In a letter to a colleague, Harris wrote, I assure you that Mr. Say's cabinet does not contain one half of the species which he has described. Of the insects in it, many are without names and all are more or less mutilated and so badly preserved that most of them are now absolutely worthless. They have, however, proved not to be worthless as researchers today continue to access the collection and piece together the mysteries contained in this collection piece by piece. It has even been possible to discern some of the type specimens based on label data and Say's detailed descriptions. So moving on to another associate of Harris, John Eaton LeCant, a specialist on hysterids who worked closely with Harris in his collections and was an early advocate for the establishment of natural history collections in North America. As we can see from one of his letters read at the Boston Society of Natural History in 1830, Harris instilled a sense of responsibility in LeCant, and LeCant's, at the time, probably pretty radical views are clear here. He writes, I trust that the day is past when our insects must be sent to Europe for some determination. Are we bound by the mere dictum of some European entomologist of equal indolence with ourselves, who chooses to name the insect which we have discovered? Where should our insects be better known than in the country which gave them birth? In, but in what civilized land are they less studied? These comments remain relevant today and something for ourselves to ponder in an increasingly global field. The stance must have left an impression on his son, the John Lawrence LeCant. John Lawrence LeCant was probably one of the most prolific collectors and describers of Coleoptera in the 19th century, having described over 500 new genera and over 4,000 new species based on specimens he collected on numerous trips to Western North America. Upon his death, the collection was deposited at the MCC. A letter written to Agassiz in 1875 and published in an early volume of the Coleopterist Bulletin posthumously, so well after the death of LeCant, reveals the importance of this collection and attests to the importance of the specimens contained within it. It contains specimens carefully prepared with those described by Say, Harris, Melsheimer, Haldeman, and Ziegler, and the unique types of the last three named authors. Clearly, a perfect fit for the MCZ collections. I'll also mention here um, this little passage. It seems I've been remiss in my duties as curatorial associate. Has LeCant required well, a rigid inspection be made of each box of specimens 
at least twice a year, and the results reported directly to the director of the museum. I definitely haven't been doing that. This collection was later reunited with the collection of George Henry Horn, who worked closely with LeConte and who shared many complementary series of type specimens with the LeConte collection. This collection, which was previously at the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia, was traded for the Scudder and Morse collections of orthopteroids in the 1970s. I think we definitely went out on that deal for sure by getting the Beatles. The presence of these collections at the NCC has had kind of a snowball effect and directly led to the acquisition of other major Coleoptera collections, including the Jacobi collection of Christ Melody, the Fall collection of North American Coleoptera, and the recent acquisition of the David Rockefeller collection of Beatles. It also established the NCC as a hub of Coleopterology, with many prominent Coleopterists passing through the doors over the years and the focus of past professor and curator Phil Darlington and current professor and curator Brian Farrell's lab. So if you'd like to use the collection, get in touch. My email is here. Um, we're happy to accommodate loans. Um, we're also happy to provide you with photos of specimens, including type specimens. Um, and actually, a lot of our types are already digitized, and you can find them um, on, the, on the internet at MCZ Base. Um, we can also arrange for visits post pandemic um, and Ernst Mayer grants are available for visiting researchers. Thank you and I'll take any questions.